Most of you know me. Uh, my name's Tex, and I'm with Trinity Paracryptic Research. And we're down here at Brown Springs. We, we put this little expedition together. It kind of snowballed on us, but um, it's in a good way. I, I got to admit, I was nervous because it, it was, I, I, to me, it was a lot of pressure, you know, to have somebody come down here. One, it was under, I felt, I'm responsible for your safety. And that's the way I look at it. And one and another one, I'm like, I hope this place does not disappoint this time, but it rarely does. And it's such an amazing place. It's notorious. Um, all kinds of activity, not just Bigfoot. And uh, we pretty much ran the whole gambit when we've been down here. But the way I got started down here, let me let me backtrack a little bit was I think it was 2017 and I had shared my dogman encounter which most of you know that that's I had a dogman encounter when I was 16 and that's kind of what got this ball rolling and I had linked up with DDoS and he invited me he invited me down here I had my first daylight Bigfoot sighting 8:30 in the morning broad daylight and I was hooked. There was no turning back from that point. My name is Jason McLean and I'm with uh, Trinity Paracrypted Research. Uh, we're here in Brown Springs today. We are here because it's a great opportunity to study both Sasquatch and the paranormal and, and maybe even see a little bit of that inter interaction. Uh, that's often described in the field by a lot of researchers. I'm here because I fell in with Tex uh, sort of accidentally. Uh, we found each other at, uh, a, at one of the Jefferson conferences. I was there doing illustrations and talks. He had me on the show and one thing went to another and I'm here, I'm not part of the team. I'm not a Bigfooter per se. Uh, I, I like researching Bigfoot as much as anyone else, but I'm, I'm not a specialist. I'm a generalist. My, in fact, the encounter that sort of got me into all of this was with a living ter uh, pterodactyl. It was a ramphoractoid that I saw. Uh, those are basically the pterosaurs that are smaller, but they have a long tail with a little, with like a star flange on the end. I, I kind of want to see each individual cryptid, where does it fit? Some cryptids are clearly physical, like, big, like a, a lot of Bigfoot encounters, living pterosaurs, uh, there's aquatic animals, those kinds of things. But then there's also metaphysical, paranormal uh, creatures, supernatural creatures, like what we see here, uh, what's observed in many, many locations. Um, I'm trying to sort of see what the shape of the world is, so to speak. Uh, I, I believe that these creatures are important, not just for themselves, though that's also true, but because they, they shed a light, uh, they give us a broader perspective on the world that we live in. My name is Mark Newble, and I live in West Tennessee. Now, how I got started in this, I worked a job for a seven-day rotation, changing shifts. Had very little time off for myself. I had a health issue and went into a coma. And when I came out of the coma, I realized that life was slipping by me while I was healing, I got into Bigfoot. So I started looking around and seeing how I could get involved. And a friend of mine had seen a newspaper article and there was, they were holding a Bigfoot conference. So I thought, I'm going. And I went and I met people and I actually found a group that was here in Tennessee. And I started going out with Mike McSwain and Shelly Reed and Larry Porch. And we were going to the land between the lakes in Tennessee. And it's kind of known as the beast of LBL. So I started a group called Sawdust Beast. And the purpose of the group was to teach people how to analyze audio. 
We figure that the more people that were reviewing audio, the sooner, the more evidence that we would find and know where to go and start setting up camps. Well, my name is Randy. Uh, I'm born and raised here in Texas, West Fort Worth. I have known Tex, like he said, about 30 some odd years, if not more now. I can only say the reason I come on these for the most part is because I, because of his friendship and going out with him back out in the woods like we used to be back as kids. I've been interested in the Bigfoot subject ever since the original In Search Of came on and I saw the Patterson Gimlin tape the first time and listened to Leonard Nimoy narrate it. I was just, I was smitten and I couldn't get enough. Every chance I came, anything Bigfoot related came on, I watched it. I have heard things out in the woods just like anybody else. If I, I bet you stay out in the woods long enough, you hear, you think you see things that you don't know how to explain them. And that's pretty much where I sit. I want to believe, but I, I want the proof to go with the belief. And I'm the same thing, cause, same thing with the paranormal because I am, that's where my big starts in this field was, was with paranormal. I was ghost hunting from about probably 89 when I was in college in San Angelo. And that was, you know, I could not get enough of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Anything they wrote, anything they talked about, any place they were at, I tried to get, just take anything I could from them. When you sit there with people using a Ouija board and watch a woman get picked up and thrown against a wall, yeah, you might want to start thinking about things. So that's what got me started with paranormal. My name is Todd Neese, and for the past 28 plus years, I've been involved in Bigfoot research. On April 3rd, 1993, I was a combat engineer. Part of what we do as combat engineers involves the use of high explosives. On that particular day, we had been given uh, access to some private timberland, uh, more specifically three rock quarries that uh, we utilized to do three different training scenarios with explosives. We had detonated explosives uh, earlier in the day at the first two sites. We had one more charge to do. It was uh, a cratering charge involving some 250 pounds of ammonium nitrate. Uh, we lit the fuses on that and got in our vehicles and convoyed to a safe area where we could wait for the explosion and go back and, and check our work and make sure we did it right. We came around this corner and the second blast site came into view, the one that we had detonated perhaps a, an hour or so earlier. What I saw were these three dark figures standing right out in the, in the open in the middle of this rock quarry. And when I realized what I was looking at weren't people at all. Um, and by that I mean, uh, yeah, they were standing on two legs uh, like us, but physiologically there were some uh, huge discrepancies, if you will, in the profile. We took another corner and I lost sight of them and I just kind of fell back in my, in my seat um, with a hundred questions swimming in my head. Uh, to see something that's n not supposed to be, it really shakes your, the foundation of, of what you know or what you think you know. Hey, my name is Christine DeWay, and in 2006 I knew I was going to have some uh, medical problems repaired, so I got an XM radio because I knew I'd be at least slowed down for a while and started listening to Art Bell back when he had Coast to Coast and he had Matt, Matt Moneymaker come on and they were going to do an expedition just a, a few hours from where I lived. We were, they were going to the Everglades and I decided I want to go. Now my, my love growing up was Crop Circles and Nessie but I thought Bigfoot, yeah why not? So I called him up and got myself a spot on that expedition. I can't say that anything extraordinary happened. 
other than I just loved it. It was so much fun. Uh, we saw this alligator that was as big as our Humvee and all kinds of stuff, no Bigfoot, but I enjoyed it. So I went on the next expedition and that one turned out to have some really interesting things go on in it. And, but then I thought, you know, it's, these places are all so far away. I think I just wanna to go to an area close to me and so I found a group that's close to me, which is the Independent Sasquatch Research Team, ISRT. And uh, I started going out with them and I met some really good people. And you just met Todd Nees. Now his uh, wife, Diane, used to be in Florida and I had gone out with her and a couple of other ladies. And we had just a wonderful time. I had lots of experiences. Yeah, my name's Gary Spikes Sr. I lived here in Oklahoma all my life. I'm purebred and raised Okie. Mostly on the farm. I've hunted, trapped, tracked animals nearly all my life. I was invited to come down this weekend and spend time with friends and hopefully do a little fishing later. I've been down here before with Tex. We've had a little bit of Bigfoot action. We've seen some Bigfoot shadows. We've had a lot of paranormal activity at the cemetery. The first time I was down here, we went up to the cemetery and we were stalked by a big cat. We seen some very unusual happenings that we think were what they call little people. On the way out from that, we found the evidence that it was a big cat because we saw it, or a junior saw it cross the road and we found its track where it stepped into a small mud hole in the road. So it was, it was a, very full night and then we've also seen Bigfoot shadows there in the camp. One came running through the camp after everybody's in bed right next to Texas truck and then we had a stump that moved so it wasn't a stump it was a Bigfoot. The river that splits the border of Texas and Oklahoma lives up to its name, the Red River. Not only by taking on the color of the clay it pours over, but the amount of blood that has been spilled into it as well. This long history dates as far back as when Oklahoma was known as the Indian Territory. From battles fought with bows and flintlock rifles, up through time of it becoming a popular body dump for the Mafia, right up to a mere two weeks after this filming. Many a poor soul has taken their last slow ride in its red currents to a final resting place. The red also serves as an ominous backdrop when you cross over into Oklahoma. And there, on a lonely wooded hill, you'll find a very old and abandoned cemetery that an infamous spring runs directly underneath and where ley lines intersect. Stories of haunting encounters, dark magic, and even sacrifice being practiced have been relayed through time. You hear about sightings and sometimes fatal interactions with the likes of Sasquatch, Dogman, and the little folk. Even reports of tigers on the prowl at night have begun to surface. The dangers are real in this place of legend and lore, and you would be wise to give heed to those who warn you of them. We have had the opportunity to not only witness these phenomena, but have been fortunate enough to catch them on film and audio. But even with documented physical evidence, such as prints and hair samples, we are inevitably left scratching our heads with more questions than answers. Thank you for joining us in this chapter of our quest as we attempt to untangle the knots of this mysterious and notorious place called Brown Springs. Because, yeah, I mean, some of those breaks are pretty high up there. Yeah. When we first found it, it they were all green. But mm. if you look, walk over and look at it. Is what's really interesting.
Just look how they push down in the center. Oh, yeah. And it's just that one side. It's not... Hmm. And it looks like it has even a ring around it, like they get in the middle of it, and it's like a little bowl shape. Yeah. But when we first found it, everything was still green. When we first found this tree a couple of years ago, and all these limbs were stripped off the one side, mm -hmm. and they're piled up right here at the bottom, mm -hmm. and you see how it's, it's that, that's not just because they've been rotten and falling. It's always had that bed in the middle. Of it. I just I thought it was really really strange that it was just stripped off of one side and then piled up down at the bottom. Got some dead limbs up above too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's if, damage, but... if you look close enough, this big one that's hanging down, mm -hmm. it's hanging on that small branch, but it almost looks like a clean break. I mean, I don't think it's like when a branch rots or dies off and then snaps. It almost looks like it was a clean one. Mm -hmm. And we're walking around. We're I don't know. We're over there somewhere, and just. Bang! Something, I don't know if a big ass tree limb fell on that thing or something slapped the side of it, but it was loud. Mm. But you didn't hear anything. You know, I, I would think if it was a big limb and it fell, you would think you heard breakage. And we were right here, me, D, and Barry Brown. And him and Barry were trying to go back here. And I'm trying to go in the cemetery and they're hollering at me, get back over here, get back over here. And so I turn around, I start walking, and they start walking. And then a damn rock about that big around bounces right behind Dee's foot. Mm. He's ready to break camp, wasn't he? <laughs> mm. And then uh, we went down this trail, and he kind of slopes off down the hill down through there. And Barry was looking around, and he says, hey, come here and look at this. And there was a stump playing peekaboo with him behind another stump. <laughs> oh. Oh. You don't say. That log had a child. Yeah. <laughs> and that night that I saw that weird eye shine up here, I was standing right about where Randy is, and it was back over. It was back off over in here, and I had heard stuff growling at me and tracking me the whole way up the, when I walked up the hill. In fact, that's what I was talking about. I, think, I don't know if I, who I was told last night, but. This is before we knew about the whole possible tiger thing or anything mm. like that. I was, but I had mentioned, you can hear it on my audio. I mentioned, I heard a growl. It almost had a purr to it. <laughs> and then I walk up here and I get that eye shine. I thought it was a booger. You know, that's the only thing I come up with that had might be that big and that mm -hmm. big spread. Mm -hmm. And um, then. A few years, fast forward a few years later, we find out, oh, well, there may be tigers in the area. You know, that night I had a pocket knife, a pin light, and my phone with no service up here. That's all I had. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times that we've been, we've been up here and heard something circling around us. Mm. You know, and then that same night when we had the, the lights go out at the same time and Junior and Senior were seeing those things, and that's the same night in the same time that they were running the necrophonics and it spit out solo beast grace grace is the name of my truck mm. um Be beast was J i think it was jason that had popped off that night and called cody uh, amy's husband a beast and he was down at the bottom of the hill by himself, mm. by the trucks, or in the trucks. Mm. And it was just a, if it's a coincidence, it's a really weird coincidence. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, that all happened, I mean, just boom, 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 boom. And uh, so, and then we were walking, after all that happened, we started kind of walking back this way, and that's when we heard something walking 
circlings on the back side. We came down through here and we were walking back and Junior saw the cat cross the road. And then we found a track out when we were driving back. We, we They found a track out there on the side of the road. Big old paw print. Wow. But Tiger, how'd they get here? Well, where we're camped, yeah. we're about a mile away from uh, what used to be the Tiger King's Ranch. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And they had some tigers escape and they didn't recover them all. And we were talking, we were coming up here one night, <laughs> we were coming up here one night, we were parked down there, and all of a sudden we're surrounded by five cop cars. It's sheriff's deputies and tribal police. And we're, I mean, I'm getting out of the truck like this, <laughs> you know, yeah. and we're not armed and all this kind of shit. And uh, we get to talking to them. They were actually out here investigating reports of a coven of witches sacrificing chickens and doing all kinds of ritual stuff and uh so we get to talking to them they you know convince them we're not witches and <laughs> maybe the other word yeah Warlocks. <laughs> but uh anyway they start I, i've talked to them for about 45 minutes and they were telling us one the tribal police one of the tribal police deputies told me that they had they've got two deputies or two officers that's had Bigfoot sightings out here. And he was telling me about a paranormal he experience he had up here when he was 16. Mm. Well, then he was talking, he says, um, I was telling him about stuff and everything. So he goes, what? You know, we was talking about being armed, none of us were armed, but Jason had a pistol and he was back at camp. And he goes, well, we encourage people when they come out here to come armed. Like, well, really? And he was like, yeah, because we've had, um, we've had tiger sightings reported. I said, back, whoa, back up, back, tiger sightings? And he's the one that told us that that thing was, had been moved over here because it used to be about 40 miles away. Hmm. And then he went to prison and this other guy took it over and moved it right behind Windstar Casino. When you go back around and everything, but. But if you look at the if you go, if you look at Google Maps where our campsite is, it's, I mean we're we're right behind it, man. Right. And uh, but yeah, they said uh, we've had reports of tigers, and they had some get loose and they didn't recover all of them. Mm. I think I can't remember the number, but it was like up in the teens that they didn't recover. Oh, you're kidding! Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's a we breeding population. Could have been. That's a breeding population. Yes, it is. And yeah. I I my theory is. The reason that they haven't had any attacks is those things are around, were born around people and they're inexperienced with uh, being out in the wild anyway. And that's the reason we can hear them when they're walking around us for one, because they're not used to it. Mm. And I don't think they see human as, as, as food. And they've got so much other, you know, game out here. That, but. Either that or it's just luck of the freaking draw. I don't know. But the cat that we saw that night was a mountain lion. So, and then them old boys yesterday that was that came up to the camp, they were telling us that uh, he they caught one on camera, but, or a couple of times I think they said he caught it on camera, and that one guy said he actually saw a bear out here when he was bow hunting. Hmm. Black, black, yeah, black bear. Really? So, um, they, they're rarely seen down this far but they are here because they're coming back, you know, so. Okay, everybody, so we heard a loud knock and so we're back here taking a look around to see if we can identify what it was. So let's take a look. See what I'm talking about? This looks like somebody's obviously traipsed through it. I don't yeah. know how long ago, obviously, but. Well, there's a beer can hanging on the branch. Yeah, so that's another thing. So look at that, that uh, deadfall right there, hmm. how it has its own little hollowed out spot there, you know? I wonder if there's anything in it. There's, we can go take a look real quick. Mm.
put in the cans. Yeah, but see how all that's beaten down? Somebody's been back here either partying or, I mean, that's... Target practice, I can see that too. What's that? Target practice. Yeah. Shoot into the side of a hill and so. Yeah, very well could have. Those look like human cuts. They are. So. I believe so too. Oh, definitely. That's that's definitely saw yeah. over there. Yeah. I'm just trying to see. Somebody just scooping around in here. Yeah. Well, I wonder how far back it was so that it happened. That's the thing. They well, could have echoed from God knows where. Well, when I first heard it, I, my first thought was it came from the fire pit, but after I thought about that for a second, I was like, no, that wasn't the fire pit. Then when you responded. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> of course, where I was at, I could see it, you know, I could understand it circling around. Mm -hmm. uh, reverberating, I should say. Yeah. Well, I guess we just back up this goes over. You said it was like a couple hundred meters to the, to the water down here. I'm not going to try and do all that. I feel like it's just a little bit. Makes it makes sense for me. <laughs> well, I'll bring my Jeep back here. Oh yeah, that'd be That's fun. My truck could go back here partly. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> Is that his camp? That was straight over yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, you should see the the uh, Kent right through here. See? Yeah, yeah. And then right behind is gonna be his hammock. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if it was over or not. And yeah, we're circling around behind it right now. See, there's a. Big downfall right there too. Mm. This is what I like to do. I like to get out in the spots I'm at too, make sure I don't know what I know what I'm looking for, I'm looking at. Right. Big ass tree. Yeah. That's a downfall for you right there. But see, it's also once again. Somebody come up and cut it. Yeah. Believe it where it's at. I wonder if they cut it just so they could drive through because here's the other piece of it. Yeah, I bet they did. Hmm. Let's start over here. Flew that way. Yeah. I don't know if to take another look, I guess. I don't know. Even if something did do it, you know, we wouldn't be, we probably scared it way off by now anyway. Yeah. Worth to come and look, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely worth to come and look at. Because it's kind of the same direction where I said I saw that, too. So. Yeah, I mean, because this is circling back around. I see it curves back around again. I'm going to look around the corner real quick. I'm going to be lying back. I think. Okay, so y'all heard somebody fart. You went crazy and ran down the river. Oh, right, right. Belch, you know, you're not... No, we heard we heard uh, a yeah. hard knock. I was standing on the passenger side, and he was in his truck. We heard a loud knock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we started walking that way, and apparently there's a part nobody else has heard. While you guys are walking this way, almost to the second tree here, right in between these two trees, um, off kind of in this direction, I hear a cross between like a grunt and a whoop. Wasn't real loud, but it was definitely caught my attention. 
Here's what I'm wondering though. Okay, you hear the knock. Mm -hmm. We y'all go to investigate. Yeah. That could have been like a hey they're coming sort of thing, a call to attention. Yeah. Hey, people hey, are coming. They, they they recognize that here they come. Yeah, they're Type coming. Thing. My thing is I wasn't sure if it was kinda quiet or if it was just further away. Oh. Okay. Because it, it kinda sounded like it kinda sounded like it was a noise that came closer to the ground, so I'm thinking it was further away. Yeah. It could have been there. But it wasn't something that was like, rah, you know. What if it kind of happened when we started walking back up on that little tree area right there? Yeah. That would make sense because that would be in that yeah. area. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I mean, when you get right down here, there's a little some downfall right there that's yeah. got a nice little hollow like, area. I can still see you. And I yeah. was like, hey, you know, oh. I was trying not to be too loud, but I could still see you, but you were almost out of view. Come on. Hey, hey. Well, we wouldn't have been that far down yet. Yeah. Hey everybody, Josh here. We are uh, at our campsite. We got in last night fairly late. It was roughly around 10.30 their time. Uh, driving in on the dirt road, uh, we almost immediately saw eyes reflecting in the headlights looking back at us. And right after that we saw a shooting star come from overhead. I got to the campsite, hung out with everybody for a few hours, talking with them, kind of getting uh, getting to know everybody. I uh, went ahead and uh, went to bed, got up this morning, uh, had, had some breakfast, hung out for a little bit. We went over to the cemetery and saw the, the stream that apparently this place is well known for because the stream actually goes under the cemetery and then it comes back out. And then um, we went, grabbed some lunch, came back, and while only a couple of us was here, we heard a loud wood knock. Like, oh, loud piece of wood just cracked against another piece. So me and one other gentleman decided to walk down the, the trail to see if we could identify it. Uh, we couldn't really see anything, but when we got back, Marianne told us that right as soon as we got out of sight, she heard what sounded like a, a grunt or a, a whoop, a very low. So it sounds like this campsite that we're at is actually already showing a lot of signs of activity. On top of that, I saw something. I, I don't know what it was. And I'm not going to claim it to be anything in particular, but I saw something that was... By the time I saw it, it was already going in a downwards motion, so I, I didn't see what it was. But I could see the brush on both sides bouncing, so there was obviously something there that dropped down. Walked over to that area and kind of gauged how high up it was. And even with my hand pointing straight up, it was still well, without, well outside of reach. So... Kind of walked around a little bit down there, didn't really identify anything, but um, I just kind of wanted to do a recap of some of the experiences so far. We are driving, following Tex and the crew, just kind of doing on a little bit of a drive about. Um, and right around this little bend, we stopped, and as I look back through this clearing, sort of, for this area, this is the clearing, you can get where it is. It's, it's, it's not so much a clearing, but that's as clear as it gets. Anyway, in the distance, it looks like, um, kind of like what I've seen pictures of Bigfoot shape, only a little smaller, unless it was just way far in the distance, hiding behind a tree. We back up a little bit, and I don't see it anymore. So either my eyes are playing tricks on me, or something was hiding behind the bushes. And hopefully we can go check that one back out again on the way back, but who's to say really because might, might have been something might have been just the way that it looked as we were driving but looked very very suspicious to me so we're gonna make a mental, mental note of that when you started going and we started going she had me stop real fast and then back up and she said that she saw what looked like a little person hiding behind the tree it wouldn't surprise me no. and when we backed up it wasn't there anymore so now here's something else you got to remember i was just telling them they didn't know it bow season for turkey and deer opened the first oh okay 
Okay. We, we could run into the occasional hunter, but... Uh, okay. So she said it looked like a little human, yeah. Yeah. how she described it, so... Well, it could be. And the thing about it is, a lot of times, when you see something like that, um, a lot of people don't realize they forget to look up. Mm. Especially the small ones. Yeah. You know, they'll scamper up in trees. But... I'll get to know. Well, let's yeah. get out of underneath this tree because it doesn't look safe. <laughs> okay. Well, this campsite that we're going to, I came down to check it one night um, before we were planning on coming out and everything. I was scoping out new campsites. And right about here, uh, in fact, that's probably, the, that looks like probably the tree right there. Um, it was across the road. Cool. It had pushed, been pushed down and across the road. And so, so well, you know, I knew we had had some high winds, so I, I, I wrote it off as that, right? Well, a few, like, a few weeks later, I came back, that tree was gone, and there was another one about 50 yards down, pushed over the road again. Hmm. So it's just a little too coincidental for me. Now, this campsite that we're fixing to go to, is where I had my second daylight sighting. That's the one with the gray fuzzy one that was hugging the tree and watching the campsite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, the, the weird thing is I've had something happen at every campsite. Mm -hmm. the, the only campsite that we, that we hadn't explored was the one that we're at currently. And I mean, we've had stuff happen, yeah. you know, but what's different is we haven't had the same stuff happen. We haven't had the big eight foot dark figures with eye shine standing, you know, watching it and everything like that. Right. Um, so I'm thinking that we may have gotten away from prop, hopefully the paranormal aspect a little more so we can focus on the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, in that area, I hope. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll find out eventually, but um, because we haven't been through the audio or anything, so there's no telling what we caught. Um, we know we heard some good stuff, what possibly some good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go down here and we'll get out and I'll show you, you know, where I had that siding and all that kind of stuff. That's a left. That's a, doesn't that look like? Anything? How it's cleared like that? Is that anything or is that just digging? No, that's where squirrels have been digging. Oh, okay. Pretty interesting. Possible footprint. Hard to tell, but it's old. It's really inconclusive. Yeah, all the way around. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's always possible but there's not enough evidence that's left behind that you could distinguish it between natural mm -hmm. and something moving through. And what I was looking for was some type of disturbance here. Uh, one thing that I like to look for is the oil that's on their hands. And so if they go through, if they grab something, they don't necessarily have to break it, but you will see that old sheen from when they go through. But there has been a sighting here. So that's why we're here looking for it. And we're looking, we're going in slow, looking for signs. What we're looking at is right here. This impression in the soil right here? Mm -hmm. 
because there's his heel. You can kind of see the toes if you look at it. But. Yeah, because I wear a size 12. Yeah, but a size 12 will be about yeah. 14 inches. So, mm. well, see, right there's the, yeah, so it would, it's actually about 15 inches, 14, 15 inches. So in my footage, I've measured mine, it's exactly 12 inches long. And I wear an eight and a half. Hmm. It's just, it's just a possibility, it's not nothing conclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of grapevine in there. That's what that is, that's what that is, is, why, is Mustang grapes. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they'll take over a tree and choke it to death. But, I mean, all those vines through there, that's all Mustang grapes. Everything. He didn't want to be in front. He just wanted to smell it. it. Looks like he smells something on that branch. Yeah, and the ground right here, right under this, under these leaves. Oh, here's the heart. like any twist. No, no twist whatsoever. Do you see anything that come down and hit it? No. Laying on the ground? No. I found something on the ground all right, but it didn't come from the sky and hit it. And there is a trail right beside it. I mean, it was around the base of the tree, it was dirt. And I don't yeah, think you know, but it wasn't just yeah, all the way around the tree. It was yeah, kind of in the back of the couple of times. Yeah. It was good yeah. yeah. so, yeah, yeah. 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 there was nothing bad. I was able to sit down and make my own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 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 I don't think that fell from the sky and hit it. No. But have you got room to put that in your truck till we get back to camp, Ted? Yeah. Can you see, does it look like it's twisted at all up there? No. Just straight over. Straight over break. A foot higher than I can reach. And it's not very old. Look at the leaves on the tree. Yeah.
one that thing that I have found. That ain't even any gold. If they're right-handed, mm -hmm. predominantly right-handed, then it'll be twisted left. If they're predominantly left-handed, it'll be twisted to the right. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one that was twisted at all. Every one I've seen has just been a clean snap. The one, the one twist that I saw was down in the bottoms right after that first campsite. Um, and it was, I couldn't get both hands around it. And it was a live oak. And it was fresh. I mean, the, the leaves were still green on it. And it was about this high off the ground. And it looked like it had just been twisted until it exploded. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of to, to describe it was um, back in elementary school when we used to make those lanterns out of car, uh, uh, yeah. construction paper, that's what it looked like. So it wasn't, you know, and you could tell, I mean, it was twisted and laid over. Yeah. You know, and we looked and there was no tool sign, there was no, you know, nothing was saw, no, nothing, you know, no vehicle tracks or nothing like that. And there's something to be able to, and then the other thing was, it was surrounded by dead saplings about this big around. It's all over the place. They went under. That didn't, that is, that's really the only tree structure that I've seen that I went, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, well, not structure, but science. But. Well, like that one is. A little bit of one, just a little bit of a twist this way. Yeah. Just not much, just a little bit. We'll pull it down. You want to try and feel it? I was going to try to find a handprint. That's a clean break, except for that little bit of a twist. Yeah. Right here. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Mark man is up there. Yep, yep. Another two foot above that. Right here, Mark. It looks like a hand. Yep. Damaged the mark a little bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. Father, we, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You have overseen all things. You have brought us together for this time on this day. Father, as these people go forward, we pray that you would protect them from all evil. That we would see the phenomenon that we are searching for so that we can prove it. We can be educated on the nature of the universe. But we pray that you protect them from all harm, from all violence, from infection, from oppression. Father, go with them as they go. Send angels to guide them and to protect them on all sides. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Gary's going to be our head counter. Okay. He is going to keep count. Gary, how many are going up? Six. Six. We go up as six, we come down as six. If something happens, somebody gets hurt, somebody gets nervous, there's no shame in wanting to turn around and come back. We go up as six, we come down as six. No prey runs, and I do not want to be prey. Everybody's intuitions matter as we go up. If you get an intuition on something, then we stop and then you vocalize your intuition and then we evaluate whether we still want to go or or to come back. And like I said, there's no shame in getting halfway up and turning around and coming back. The main thing is safety. I just one hundred percent. I have to go slow because I, I I don't. And we're going to go slow. Okay. We're not going to separate. Who is going to lead us and who is the rear man? I would I would like for him to be rear because he's head counter. I'll take point, and if you want to come right behind me, take the get. I'll take because I'll set the I'll set the slow pace. Well, I'm going to be a floater too because I'm going to be filming all of you. So. Yeah. How do you want to do it? Uh, I'll take point. Okay, got it. Thank you. He got the stick. He couldn't knock the spiders out of our room. Yeah, that's true. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Just Josh, uh, Josh, if you turn it towards me, warn me first. Okay. Because I'll be behind you and you're behind me. Okay. You start it, start it right now. It don't. Okay. Right, I can start mine right, I've, gotten, I've gotten a lot of stuff down here. Give me a time check. You get yours. Yep. Sure is a different feel at night, isn't it? Appropriate song for the area, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my one of the main songs to sing karaoke. <laughs> there you go. My, my music turned on. Really? Yeah. Yeah, my phone went nuts down there in the pickup before I even got out. Yeah, that's true. You did. You did have that issue. 
Well, my Jeep had issues right after I passed the cemetery, and then when I came back, I was able to correct it. Stick with the group, yeah. Hey, on set, guys. That cat was laying right up there. Okay, let us know when they'll stop. I, I, I said right here's that tree, that tree. That cat was laying right there when we come through here that night. Okay. And right down there. No, it's back there. Right down in there is where we saw those little people. Wow. Cool. Marianne saw one of them today, I think. I want to hear the little saw them today, you story think? sometime. Is that what you said? What's up? Marianne saw them today, you think? Uh, Marianne thinks she saw one when we were driving uh, over to oh, the yeah, over there by the beaver trap. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Checks at work. <laughs> you know, like a Tesla. Seems like so long ago since I was doing this by myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I miss it. You miss doing it a lot. Yeah. Tired of people blinding you. <laughs> no. You just gotta get a group mentality. What's that reflective thing on that tree? Which one? It's just a real small dot reflecting. Dot? Yeah, you see it? This, tree. Oh, this, tree. this big one right in front of you. Right here? Where his light is hitting. Right there? Yeah. There's a little reflective thing. Just to the left of where his light is hitting. Yeah. And up a little bit. Right there. There's a reflective surface on it. I see it. Is that yeah. green, green dot? Yeah, move your light and see spider. if it... I'll tell you right now, it's a spider. If you aren't looking dead in their eyes, you can't see it. It's not?
Wow, I just totally felt like somebody was behind me. <laughs> was okay. I thought somebody was. <laughs> What's that? There's something in the tree. There's something in the So what's it look like? Good just eyes. Huh? The good eyes. What what is it? Just a piece of metal or something? Yeah. That's random. It's a little piece of metal. We think it's due to a gunshot or something like that. Trap don't come into it. Oh wow. Oh there's one higher too. Where? Same tree. See that that little pocket? Yeah. Yeah, right in there. Move your flashlight a little bit and I see the reflection from where I'm standing, but Oh, there's some white spots there that's molded on the tree. Yeah, because it's in that knot. Oh, you got the K2 going too. Yeah, so oh, go, go ahead and move your light. Yeah, go ahead and move your light. By you, so I can see where you're looking. Do you see it? It's right where his light is hitting. Yeah, up, to, up high there. Yeah, I see it. So it's another it's, one of those. It's three. more, yeah. That's crazy. It's white. Yeah. Just random. If I could find another... Another one for the, uh, I show you the green eyes of the, the spiders. Yeah. I had one back there, but y'all couldn't see it because y'all were just a little bit off center. So I think that they were bullets in the tree. See yeah. This right here? Yeah. That's what that is back here. I bet you could find On that tree right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Something rattled the leaves right in there. <laughs> yeah. Something rattled the leaves out here. This is quite interesting. What's that? Oh, I can't find it again. Where's the big tombstone? Let me find it this way. Here it is. Watch the heat signature. It almost looks like it's talking, like it's moving and it's doing stuff. Isn't that interesting? And that's through the tree, so did you record? We can't tell if she's recording, but yeah, that it's does not look recording. interesting. But I'm always thinking, is it talking to us or what? Mark, stand back this way. I'm not sure what we're seeing. It's this tombstone. Yeah, it's the tombstone itself, right? Uh-huh. It may be still having some sort of ambient. Oh, uh, it could be a reflection, too. Yeah. I mean, it's down low. Like a I don't think it was this one, but I don't know. That's real thick right there. Very signature, very, very distinct and clear. Why is he doing that? I'm guessing he hit it down the stairs. All right, Ken, just up. I don't think I locked mine, so it must be yours. Yeah, he probably hit it by mistake. Uh, can you call him? Can there? somebody call him and ask him if everything's all right? Oh, yeah, I don't have my phone. You calling them text? Yeah. Does he have his phone? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Back to the 
know when you're ready to move on, Randy will come up and join you. Okay. Please let me know you're here right now. You can speak into this little black box that is all my in my hand. Zero milligals. Micro Tesla, zero volt. NDVP at Mausoleum area. Even though I don't turn it off, I'll still go through the whole thing later. I might just catch something later on, you know? Yeah. That's what I used to do that tri field. I'd always try and get all three fields. Mm hmm. But sometimes it didn't work out that way. <laughs> mm, that's true. K2 is just staying on flat. Just staying flat. I'm going to walk up here and set this down by the game cam. Okay. Need light? You good? Yeah. I can't believe somebody left a whole dollar on this headstone. Oh, yeah. Crazy. I never can't. I always thought it was the piece of scared, if I remember right. No, it's a, an offering. Just pay your respects, things like that. But I hear different theories on it. Some people say it's for uh, soldiers. You leave a nickel. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that one too. So. I'm sure myself. Wait, 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 wait. The bird just screeched back this way. Is that what it was? Is everybody ready to move? Yep. See if any more is behind it. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Christine? Oh, I'm still hanging in there. Oh, I'm just there. Thank you. No, uh, something down on the ground. I thought it was eyes, but it's staying on permanent, so it's just something reflecting. It's just something reflecting, it's not eyeballs. I'm keeping an eye out for eyeballs. <laughs> Mandy thought something, he saw something going down over there. Just on the left side of that, just almost where that light, blue, that light, how yep. that leaf is, it's right behind that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, that was text. I don't know if it's a shadow play mm -hmm. or right. what. Yeah, I'm with you on that. That's definitely, that's cool actually. I like the way it's done. Mm 
Mm -hmm. just, we're going to stay right here. He's just going to get really thick. It starts dropping down. So let's just keep our eyeballs on him and we're going to yeah. hold up here. All right. Spot over there. Yes, you are. That's him. That's him. Yeah, see, he's right through there. See his light. Oh. Who is that? All right, Tech. Oh. Y'all want right. me to go? You Everybody got. good? Yep. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to go right here? I'll back you up on this place. Wait a minute. Well, we got him, what are we doing? We're going to go straight through. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. Checking our planks. This is a tight area. looks like it's talking to you. The color doesn't change cool. so quickly. That's why I did it. That's all. That's cool. That's the kind of stuff I like to grab with that thing because I can actually put it on the computer later and kind of do a little enhancement type stuff on it. Mm -hmm. he he, he's a hot spot for sure. Did he do something down there? Hmm? They're just checking. Oh, okay. There's a tombstone down there. That's it. That's that little girl. Oh. That's a four or five year old girl. Oh. I'm gonna do, I wanna get down there by that to do the, the right. EMF. Go ahead. And check it real good. I'm gonna let him come back up first. Okay. Can't make out the date. It, that, one's, that one's that five year old girl, isn't oh, it? Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think she's uh. I didn't think you came back in this far. Yeah, I went all the way down, down this way. Oh, okay. If I'm not mistaken, I'll go give you the thing I'll, I want to do it. Eat. Uh, right, in there, there's a man. What? Huh? Oh, man. Uh, you know, you know, you video I took in the tombstone, mm -hmm. you cannot actually yeah. start a paranormal um, wave, I don't know what to call it, a paranormal event mm -hmm. by going into uh, tombstones and going into cemeteries at night and looking at the, the way the signatures move and trying to decode them as if there's something, you know, that the tombstone is trying to express. Yeah. And you could start a whole new fad or area of exploration. That really good. Yeah. yeah. I, got a, I got a little video on here. I got eight minutes of a tombstone just doing wild things. That was cool. Yeah, this is pretty much as far back as the tombstones go, right? No, they, no, they, go, for, they go all the way down this hill too, but we can't get to them. It's too thick. Yeah, too thick down through there. But I'm talking about on the on this ridge line right here. 
Yeah, the, the actual tombstones keep going down there. No, I understand, but I'm saying just on this ridge, oh. what we're on right here, this is pretty much where it ends right here. I think. I, is that that's the way I understand it, Tex? As far as on this ridge right here that we're on right now, this is pretty much the last one going this way. Yeah, I don't think there's any on the back side. Okay, that, yeah, that's what I was asking. I remember we, we went down that way. There, there's there's before. quite a few back in here, but it is thick. thick yeah, you can't even have a kind of light through that stuff. So. I'm way down that way. There's some down in there, but yeah. we can't get to them. It's, I mean, yeah, there's just way too much thick growth. Right. I mean, you're crawling off. through briar and everything yeah. else. Yeah, we did that last yeah. year. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. And that, the last call. I thought I heard something. Yeah. Just a second ago. Oh, shut up. Over there earlier, um, when I kind of walked forward up, and I was right behind Randy, and I was, I saw something move, and it kind of, it looked like it kind of did this, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had Mark come up and check it. He didn't see anything, but. All of a sudden, I just got goosebumps all over. So I don't think we're alone. We've had, we think, two rocks thrown at us. Um, it's not, it's not, the feeling's not as intense as it has been in the past up here, but there is, there's definitely stuff around us, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, as thick as the canopy is, I'm not too sure, even with all the gear that we've got, if we would even know if there was one up in their canopy, you know, if there was a critter up there or not. But, uh, hmm. I don't know, this place never <laughs> ceases to amaze me with stuff that goes on. Did you hear something down there? What's that? I thought I heard something down there. Not oh. that bird. Oh. Tell him stop. Hey, stop. stop. Oh. Hang on. Either hold your position or head back this way. Is this where you put your box, Tex? Huh? Is this where you put your box or has it been moved? No, it should be right over here. Okay. It's sitting right down here. Yeah. There's a pencil on this grave. Is this oh, where yeah. yeah. That was there today. Okay. Now we heard something down here. Yeah. Well, good. Maybe we'll catch something on the camera down there. Okay. Now uh, this last last three uh, letters of the last name are CCA. December thirty first, eighteen. I think so. Butterfly. Died January sixteenth, 
1875. And as we were going down, like I said on the way up, I think we seen that cat up the tree. As we were going down twice, I saw it tailing. And then it disappeared and it ran across the road down there in front of us. I see a light shined on something up there and I couldn't figure out what it was. I don't know what it was. I'm looking through the caramel. A little tug and that's one of the things that I don't like to yelp and cry like a little baby, but mm -hmm. that's one of the ones that catches you off guard and you just freak. And this startles you, yeah. Yeah. Now am I going to go running down the hill? No. That ain't going to happen, but yeah, I'm going to yelp a little bit. The fence. It's just down through, through all that, right? Yeah. yeah. I got a little flashlight at the house. I forgot to or at the car. I just didn't put it on yeah, this one. Yeah. I need to figure out a utility belt. Give me some my old webbing and stuff, you know, old battle rattle and throw it on, I guess. When I ran my team I actually wore a SWAT vest. That's that's what I'm thinking. I may have to go get my old my old Molly vest and stuff. Mm -hmm. And start putting stuff on it, I guess. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna really get back into it. Again. Yeah, see that big tree right there? Yeah. That's the one that they come out from behind. But we were up at a different angle back there. You know, I think we up on the tree's edge just barely talking about it. I know that's the sign down there. Yeah. But I literally, I looked through, I could have, you know, I was going to go Right before, I, I saw you do that, but right before you did that, I got a chill. Yeah. But I don't think it's, Physical. I don't think it's physical. There's something else. Yeah. I wish we'd have brought we'd have brought her. I wish we would have married. I would have been able to come out. I could use a, a sensitive right now. Yeah. Just to kind of that's make sure I wasn't. Yeah, that's the that's that's sign. sign down there. That's but where that light when I stopped, mm -hmm. it looked like something, and it wasn't nothing made noise. I just saw something go across there. Yeah. Well, I was looking at you and got a chill and then saw your eye movement and yeah. knew that you saw something. I don't get an awful lot of chills. Uh, not me either, but look at my arm. Yeah. yeah, I got a chill. If you're here, speak into the recorder in my hand. There's a spider right there in front of you. Oh, you got it. I'm not picking up any actual disturbances in any of the, of the stuff, or the, uh -huh. or, or the frequencies or anything, so. I picked up while you were standing there. I picked up. Where at? In that, yeah. I didn't do it. Uh, it wasn't me. I didn't want it. It wasn't outside. No. It was, it was like this high-pitched one. Yeah. It didn't come from anywhere. Just kind of feels like an empty forest right now. Like when I stepped here, I got that feeling. I mean, I know that's a sign. I swear to God, I saw something go across the sign. And it wasn't this, it was through the hole. Yeah. Do we want to get up here at the top and look at it from this yeah. angle? Let's try it that way next. Okay. We'll it move may up very well just be eye tricks. I think I can say it's not eye tricks. Sure. So. Yeah. Well, I had Mark check back here because I heard something going down through there. You hadn't heard something else go down through there? Back over there. See that little that glint? Spider? Oh no, I thought it was a camera. 
back up in there, I heard something going down there. Yeah. 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 I saw something, but I didn't hear anything. Yeah. What the hell is he doing? Is he trying to say, bring your ass back down? I guess we ought to head down. Huh? Yeah. yeah, it sounds like he's having issues. Okay, we've done an hour of EVP and movement. I'm going to take a quick look down this hill real quick. Uh, I'm going to go with this right here. Go. Right. You know me, Tex, if, if I get an actual feeling, I got to look. Okay. I mean, we hear you. That's what was worrying me that man. That big cat could come up through this crap and jump on any of us. Yeah. We wouldn't know what the hell hit us until it's too late. That's right. And I wasn't sure this nine millimeter would stop it. It's going, it's going to take a hunk out of somebody before it does stop them. I'll tell you that. Six. What? Hey, Christine. Oh, Mark. <laughs> Larry, uh, Randy. Josh. Myself. That would be six. I thought he said Tex 15. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap, you think Tex is like a 15? That's a that ain't no owl, buddy. No, it ain't. That was an owl. Did you hear the trill? Oh, yeah. That is. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I have never heard a booger be able to do the trill at the end. I've never heard a hoot owl to screech like that to start with. It was a key with them, I was just saying as we were coming down, normally up in the trees you should see an owl or two. Well, think, right? Auto thing. Okay. He's up in there so deep we can't see him. Yeah, he's got to be back. I've never heard a hoot owl do that. So we're down here in, in what we call the first campsite. It's technically not, but anyway, this is where I had my first sighting. And there's a tree line, and I know, and I apologize, but for the lighting and everything, but we're, we're trying to do this. But there's a tree line right here, and there's what used to be a wheat field on the other side of it. And this tree line is only about 15 yards thick. Now, when me and, and Dee were down here, we came we came in about 8.30 in the morning, and I had never been down here before. I had never seen this place or anything. So we parked about right here where we're at, and uh, we get out of the truck. He's getting his gear situated, and I'm standing on. I'm standing outside the driver's side, right about here, and I'm, I'm just kind of taking in the lay of the land. And like I said, there's a wheat field over there. It was pretty mature wheat. It was probably about three and a half, four feet tall. I'm, I'm getting no. It had to be. It was about four feet tall. It had to be. But anyway, um, maybe higher than that. But uh, I'm just kind of looking around, and I see this critter stand up in the middle of this wheat field, look around like this, and take off running down into the bottoms. Now the bottoms, what I call the bottoms, what it is, you have the Red River about 300 yards away from us, and this is a floodplain. So whenever it really gets flooded up here, all this is covered in water. And when you're down here walking around, you can see the mud line on the trees. That it'll get up to about 15 feet. Now, I had had some other encounters down here when I used to come down here by myself. And when I started bringing people down here, I had brought Jason and Randy down here with me. And um, the first night, it was just me and Randy. And... We had, we had heard a few things, but yeah. nothing really spectacular. But we're sitting there and um, got the campfire going. Randy's over to my left. And I was just sitting there looking around. And I see what looks like a humanoid figure walk up out of the shadows, out of the bottoms, just on the edge of the firelight. And then it just faded right back in, walked right back into the shadows and disappeared. And it was muddy. 
where it was. We looked, there was no, I, you know, there was no track. So it was like, well, it could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, whatever. So we just went on about our happy little business. The next night, Jason showed up and we had set some camera traps. We had one in the back of my truck. Yeah. Yep. We had one in this tree line facing yeah. this way. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we had two in this tree line facing one, that way. Facing that way. Yeah. And we had one on the hood of your car facing this way. Yeah. Now right behind it, right back here this way, there's a hay field. And it had been mm -hmm. it had been mowed it had been cut and bailed and yeah. everything. It was clear. So they were sleeping in their cars up here. Now we're gonna take you down into the camp, into the, where I was camped. Um, but there's, there's a gravel turnaround right up here, and they were sleeping in their cars up here. And I was in my truck, I was down here by the campfire. I thought that I saw them get out and was walking around their cars. Thought I really didn't pay it much mind. Well then, a few minutes later, I start hearing something walk up through this tree line towards my truck. And then I hear something on this side in these trees coming towards my truck. I thought it was them jacking with me. So I'm getting ready to reverse the prank on them. And then it just, both of them just turned around and walked back. And I thought, well, that was weird. Well, then I get out and I'm messing around. This all happened about 1.30 in the morning. Okay. So I get out and I'm messing around the camp. And Jason woke up. Yeah. And saw my light bobbing around down there. And he came to see what was up. I told you, what I asked you if you had got up to take a piss. Yeah. You said no. Nope. And then you proceeded to tell, I have told you what I saw. And then you proceeded to tell me, well, you know what's really weird? Yeah. So while all that had been going on, I was asleep in my car right over here uh, next to Randy. And again, I'm na I'm blind without my glasses. So I'm, you know, my glasses were off. I was asleep. But I had this, we'll call it a dream for the lack of any other phrase. But I saw the field in front of me. I was dreaming, the dream was I was in my car asleep. But I could still see the field. And what I saw were three tall figures that looked like, like I could see where the eyes were. They were, they were, they were sort of a bright white. But everything else in them was like they were made of fire. But like they didn't. You could clearly see the outline. Like they weren't like the human torch. It was more like the volcano creature from Moana, right? Where it has this internal flame, but you could clearly see where the eyes were, where the arms were, and they were walking towards us. Next thing I know, we wake up. Or I wake up and I see his headlamp bobbing. And so I just thought it was a weird dream until he started telling me about what was going on with him. Unbeknownst to me, while I'm having my dream and he's having his experience, Randy, uh, once he w once he finally wakes up, yeah, because we waited till daylight to wake him up because he had been yeah. up and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then when mm -hmm. he when he woke up and finally walked down to the camp, yeah, yeah, we asked him the same question. Yeah. You know, did you get up and take a piss? No. But and I gotta mention that. Right. Here, come on over here, Randy. And right. so I gotta mention that. When I saw what I thought was them walking around the car, I, after I thought about it, I never saw any dome lights come on. Yeah. So, you know, I thought, well, okay, it can be done, whatever. But you got up, yeah. you came down to the camp, yep. and we asked you the if same I thing. Did, if I got out and I said no. Right. And that's what I'm, you t told me everything that you had experienced, and he said what he had yep. saw. I said, I, I kind of roused up about that same amount of time thinking I thought, you know, something was out there. Didn't think nothing about it. Rolled over, went back to sleep. Yeah, because you said you thought you saw Jason walk by your car and exactly. take a leak. Exactly. I thought I saw somebody walk across. Well, I thought it was him. I yeah. Didn't think nothing about it. Rolled over, went right back to sleep. Didn't think anything about it until we talked about it that next right. morning. So. Now, what was weird, yeah. if this wasn't weird enough, remember the camera traps we talked about? And what happened was, like I said, this all took place at one, about 1.30 in the yeah, morning. Yeah. And we, so we pulled the cameras down. Yeah. 
None of them had anything of any significance no. except the one that was right here. Right. Where two of them. Actually, or, yeah, both of them were the same way. Yeah, we're the same way. And that is that when we go to check the cards, they they had registered images that were all blank, fired at about one and two one and two a.m. Yeah. Just about the time all this was taking place, and they took fine pictures before and fine pictures after, but at the exact time they glitched. Yeah. So that that was a really weird experience we had down here. Yeah. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk down here to the campsite. And depending on what it looks like down there, we may go right into the bottoms. And there's a tree that's been, I think it was just washed over during the flood or whatever. But what I want to show y'all is the hole that I'm not sure, it, it just doesn't look like it was washed out underneath this tree. It looks like it was purposely dug. If it's still there, I haven't been down here in a while. So we're going to go take a look at that. Um, and I can also show you down there where I've had, the, there's a little rise right beside the campsite. And I've had these critters come up right, I mean, it's it's not what, 20, mark, what, 20 feet from camp. And if that, and right up on me. And it happened several times. First time I thought it was freaking pigs, and then I got halfway to Fort Worth and called Kerry Arnold and was talking to him. So hey, you ever had pigs walk up on you and not make any noise? He's like, no. He said, so I'm like, he goes, you know what that was? I got mad. So, because I left because I thought it was pigs. I didn't have a gun. I didn't even felt messing with them. You know, they're coming right up in my camp. They're 20 feet away. Bug yeah. out one of can. Mm -hmm. So, but turns out it probably wasn't pigs. So, I uh, kept having that same experience a lot. I had rocks thrown at me in here. Um, it's it's just insane. I mean, I've, I've, there's video of, of where I've caught whoops and, and got actually whooped back and then they answered me back. Um, you know, it's just... And I heard one of the craziest freaking bionic bird. I don't know what it was down here. But I'm, I'm almost inclined to think I've heard what you saw. <laughs> Jason, because this thing was unreal. Um, the owl that we heard um, up when we come out of the cemetery didn't hold a candle. This thing, and it was, it was a. Ah! I mean, it was crazy, man. I've never heard anything like that. But uh, not, I don't. I mean, it must be some kind of tropical freaking bird making noise like that. But this, let's take a walk down through here and see what we can find, and uh, we'll uh, show y'all around a little bit. All right, right over here, I had uh, a gentleman down here, uh, Clay Campbell with uh, Sasquatch Truth, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he, he really hadn't been out boogering or squatching or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, I'm still trying to find my, coin my phrase on yeah, that. Yeah, because I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> Critter crunching or something, I don't Thank know. You. But, uh, <laughs> Just don't be squatching it. Researching. <laughs> Research. So Thank you. Camping. Researching. Camping. Camping. With, there we go. Camping with ambition. Yeah, there we go. So, but anyway, we were down here, and he uh, had his hammock tied up back here in, in these trees. And <laughs> we <laughs> had pebbles being thrown at us through this tree line. And you could see them sailing through the leaves, you know. And they were coming from... The tree line connection goes along the ridge over here um, that drops off into the bottom. And you can see these little pebbles just sailing into the camp, you know. And he gets over in his, his uh, hammock and they start pinging his hammock with these pebbles. <laughs> and I'm laid up in the back of the truck and I'm hearing him, <laughs> what was that? I was like, well, we're, you know, we're, and we, they're hitting my hammock. I'm like, yeah, I know, you know. We're trying to be quiet, and he's excited. I mean, because it's his first time and, and everything. I believe it was his first time. But uh, he's excited and everything. And then uh, something funny happened, and I pick on him a lot for this, but God love the guy. He's a great dude. And uh, I, I, he's welcome out in the brush with me anytime. And uh, but an armadillo walks, roots his way under his hammock when all this is happening. <laughs> and... 
he wasn't in the hammock no more. <laughs> he come out of the hammock. He's like, what in the world's going on? What is that? What is that? Well, I said, it's a squatchadilla, you know, so. But that was something funny that happened. But even, even something that's comical, we were getting interactions with these critters. And uh, this is the mound right here. I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but this mound, this, I don't know what else to call it. A mound, a rise, a little ridge, um, but it drops off back there. And that's where I would have these things come up and I'd be camped right here. So that's how close these things were getting to me just about every time I came out here by myself. And that's where they were when I thought they were pigs. Unfortunately, we can't make it down in the bottoms. It's just it's standing water, muddy. So we're not gonna go, we're not gonna go down in there tonight. But uh, quick observation, though. Yes. The you had your campfire when when the thing came up out of the dark. Right. Right. right? The campfire was literally like right about here. And if you look down, like it's. It was, you can see how many leaves and stuff are here. It was covered with these leaves. Yeah. So, an important thing here is it was later in the year, colder and all, and this was all covered with foliage. And on that, with that creature that had eye, eye shine, it came out of the darkness, made no noise and left no prints. Right. But then we had later to the, the other creatures that showed right. up made a lot of noise right you heard them moving through the brush right so that is I, I think a very important aspect to all of this is there are there's phenomena that seems to make no noise leave no prints they can come right up on you and then there are others right. that are running around making noise leaving footprints so it, it it's indicative of just how weird this area is yeah. because i think it's a perfect point where we're seeing two different phenomena overlapping right. in many, many cases. And I, and I think, you know, the campsite that we're in now, mm -hmm. I think we may have... Sort of gone outside the perimeter. Going, out, going outside that paranormal circle, as it were. Um, and we can actually get more physical stuff. And that's... I really want to concentrate on the wild. The paranormal stuff... You want paranormal? Come on down. I yeah. mean, it, it's like, let's make a deal. You spin the freaking wheel, what do you want to see? Yeah. But um, and the problem with it is we can't, you, you can't you reliably can't, right. monitor it or objectively observe it exactly. like we could. Exactly. If big if, again, assuming that there is a physical Bigfoot that's just a, an, a natural animal, we can observe them. We can take pictures of them. Video. Right. We can collect genetics. We can do everything. Exactly. We can't do that with the paranormal. No. So that's why we want to make sure there is that discrepancy. But right. it is. But the, the key to Brown Springs, though, is that it does tell us. That perhaps a lot of this other you know, phenomenon that goes mm -hmm. off as Bigfoot may not be Bigfoot, yeah. and that may actually explain why we're ha why they seem to, to have these quote unquote you know paranormal abilities. Well, maybe right. it's not actually Bigfoot. That's what I'm thinking. And I mean, it, it's it, it, there's really I can swallow that explanation a lot easier than I can that this flesh and blood ape, sorry, person. However you want to tag Hominoid. it. There you go. Um, has these paranormal, supernatural abilities to mind speak, to phase in and out, to turn invisible. Yeah, turn invisible, and you know it, it's uh, dematerialize through a tent, lay hands on you, and heal you. Yeah. You know, shape shift into a. An Asian couple. An Asian couple. Moving through the, right. the park. I mean, yeah. I just don't think that that is Bigfoot, as we as we want to think Bigfoot. That is something that is portraying itself as Bigfoot. Potentially. We, we can't think, say for well, certain. Well, that's just an opinion. Yeah. Right. It's just an opinion. Yeah. It's, but it's, they are, it's either potentially trying to hide as Bigfoot, right. or the phenomena appears enough like Bigfoot that we're mistaking right. it for Bigfoot. It's one of the because two. We, we've, seen, we've been down here at different campsites. We've seen the tall humanoid eight foot with eye shine back in the shadow. Yeah. You know, you can't call that a Bigfoot because you don't really know what it is. You know, the thing about it is 99% of the people are going to go, oh, I saw a Bigfoot. Yep. How do you know? You know, 
the only sightings that I've had were, but that I'm going to say were sightings were daylight sightings. And no matter what he says, they were physical big. So, I, I have daylight sightings. But here's the but thing, that, right? Right. We've had to narrow that down. We've had to narrow that down. But it's like these are daylight sightings, like you said. When it came out of the wheat field, right? Right, right. It looked around and did this and took off. Right. That's something you would expect a natural creature exactly. to do. These supernatural entities don't ever seem to behave that way. No, they just stand and watch. Yeah, and they seem to be in complete control right. the entire time. Yeah. And that's, again, they seem to behave differently. Different behaviors, they don't make noise, they do no. all these other things. While it does appear the creatures that do make noise and leave tracks behave differently. So. It's Brown Springs is that key to say there's clearly two different phenomena yes. happening. At least now, two it, different. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. At least two, because I mean, some of the things that we've witnessed and we've seen, and other people's witnessed and seen has been with us, gets even wilder yeah, than it, that. Yeah, it really does. I mean, yeah, critters that disappear when you turn the light on, and they reappear after you turn the light off. It, you know, it's just, it's just, it, it boggles the mind. Right. Because it's so hard to separate all this, and that's what we're trying to do. And with this new campsite, we've got high hopes. Yeah. Because it's really looking like we may have gotten outside that little area, affected area, so how you try. Hey, Brown Springs Triangle. No, you know, it's a triangle, though. Come on. Get, get, Can it be a parallelogram? Uh, all right. I, I'll give you that. All right. I'll give you Just that. saying. Uh, octagon? Ooh. I, I, I like, but I like that. parallelogram. Brown Springs pentagram. Maybe. <laughs> so, but anyway, we'll come up with it. But the, the, another phenomenon that we know we have here is ley lines that intersect. If you don't believe us, look it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, because multiple people's looked it up, counting ourselves, and it's there. Now, another another thing that we think that may be attributing to the high activity, especially in the cemetery, is the spring, Brown Springs itself, runs underneath the cemetery, bubbles up right on the other side of it. You can go watch it and it's coming out of the ground. Yeah, you can hear it, yeah. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, it, it's you can see it bubbling up. It's right there and it runs right underneath the spring. I mean, it's the cemetery. Well, and there's also the, I am, I would put money that that, that, that cemetery right. was originally a mound because of its location yeah. to the river, uh, its overall shape. Again, when you kind of look yeah. around, it's just like there's stuff on the it's Texas side. Yeah. yeah. But here, it's like it's mostly flat and it just sort of comes right. up. The mound, again, it, it would have fallen into disrepair, right. but the mound, but the, um, the uh, mound builders were all over Oklahoma. And those things get weird. Uh, it's and it isn't unheard of to have later cultures come and use the same cemeteries, right. uh, burial mounds, things like that, and use them for the same purposes. I mean, back in the day when that cemetery was being used by by the settlers in the yeah, area, yeah, by the settlers in the area, that very well could have been a beautiful place. Yeah, and high up and everything, and it's again yeah. Boot Hill. Right. Well, that's the thing. Why? Why? Well, because the Indians. Buried right. their people here. Right. The Chickasaw had already, you know, there is a there is the mound. They put their cemetery on top. Now we can't prove it because we're on Chickasaw right. land, and no one's going to allow an archaeological excavation here. Right. Well, and we've got reports of people that have theories that they've been back on the private property back there by Leaper Lake and all this kind of stuff. And it wasn't us. So if y'all are listening over at Leaper Lake, whatever, it wasn't us. But we've gotten reports that. We're too lazy to break and enter. <laughs> there, there are burial mounds over there. Yeah. So, and that's just right down. The, I mean, it's, it's a stone throw away. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just it's a lot of weird stuff, and we're just trying to decipher it best we can, we're trying to get a handle on it, and we're trying to get this information out to y'all because that's how we're that's how we're going to crack this, this this crazy puzzle we got going on. It's how Conundrum. Yeah, wrapped, like in the a, ra wrapped in an enigma and hidden in some goat somewhere. Yeah. The, the simple fact of the matter, though, is that we've been doing, you know, people, we've been squatching for 50 years, not us personally, but yeah. we've been looking for over 50 years sincerely at this phenomenon. We don't seem to be necessarily any closer to no, it. No, we don't. 
If and anything, I think we're further we're away. We're further away. And again, one of the reasons for that, I think what we've discovered here is not all the phenomena that's being called Bigfoot right. is actually Bigfoot. No. A lot of this is probably going to end up being paranormal material yeah. that's either, again, either deliberately or we are simply misinterpreting it as paranormal or as Bigfoot. But it's paranormal activity. And once we can create a better paradigm right. for separating them so we can say, hold up, this person's reporting this, this person's reporting this, this is actually Bigfoot and this is paranormal, we're going to start seeing things separate more clearly and we can get a better idea of where we need to be and when we need to be there. Well, and I think so. And that, that, that's a perfect segue into what I want to say. Because what the, with us, you know, we've been working a lot with Amy and Lanny at What the Paranormal. Because they bring a different skill set to the table. So, <laughs> poor Randy over here is His a... <laughs> He, he's he's a ghost hunter. He's been ghost hunting for a long time. Did a lot of uh, Gettysburg and you know all that kind of stuff. So we brought him in, and because it's really hard, it's hard enough for people that are as close as we are yeah. and as available as we mm -hmm. are to do this, in, uh, you know, on a regular basis. Yeah. But when you're trying to collaborate with a different channel and different people that got their own things going on. Whenever we can, we're bringing them. We're, they're going to meet us here. No doubt about that. You will see Amy and Laney a lot more with us and us over there. Um, but we're going to bring Randy in to get that skill set within our circle. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm. I don't see. I, I see great things in the future um, because that's going to allow us to hopefully untangle this web. But in that period of three weeks, it got broke. And what in the hell would break something out in the middle of this? Hey, man, high. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's above my hand. Yeah. It's real similar to the other one, though. Uh -huh. It is. What's up with that? Yeah. Right there, it looks like it looks like a thin tree. Uh, right there? Yeah, right there. That's, that's the, the tree, tree branch. Tree 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 tree. Oh, that's yeah. the tree branch you're looking at? Okay. That's how we're looking higher up. No, no it's, it's like one hill. Yeah. yeah. Nothing fell out of this tree here. Really. Right. It's just nothing else. It's just out in the middle of nowhere and it's been over uh, what, seven and a half feet up yeah. seven and a half, eight feet up. Right here is where that eight footer was standing when we were out there. Right. And I found the stick the next morning right here that he snapped and dropped. Yeah, snapped in three places. Yeah. I think he was just, I, you know what? I think that was a twig that he just had his hand in fiddling with. I don't know how That was right there. Yeah. Y'all were all facing around that way, and I was looking this yeah. way, and I said, we got company. Yeah, and this is about where we had the food set, and the tripod with the camera was right yeah. there. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Over a thousand snaps on the game cameras, and they were all black. They were all black. And that one on the tripod got That's moved. Burned. Got moved. <laughs> and... And it's not the camera that moved, it was a tripod that got moved. Like, that's weird. And right here is where that that critter come out of the brush. You come out of back here yeah. and run up there and run through into the... Because my truck was parked right here. And he run on, he run between my truck and the trees. And then went back into the trees. See where the, the, the trees thin out right there? Mm -hmm. That's where Junior saw eye shine uh, about eight feet off the ground. Oh. And then my trailer was sitting right over here, and after the rain Friday night, yeah. the whole side of it got plastered with little pebbles. And I got paint chips going out of my trailer to prove it. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's go back to camp. Yeah. What we see and experience as observers of the cryptid and paranormal world is just the tip of the iceberg of what we don't. This amazing and beautiful place we call home. Whether you believe it's the big blue marble or a flat plane of existence, it's full of mystery, both present and past. That we as humans, we will never know the answers to until the afterlife. It makes no difference if you hold to the creation or the evolutionary side of how this universe came to be. One has to admit that there are things out there we just can't explain. 
There are places in this world that for some reason or another hold phenomenon that allow us to glimpse through the ever thinning veil of our so-called reality. This location is exactly that. It has earned a bloody and dark reputation that has given some of the most seasoned researchers pause to the point where they have vowed never to breach its borders again. Thank you.